Let me say it's a pleasure of being here. I want to say good morning to everyone. And I will also want to say good morning to I or people out there. Part of the district listening to us. I am excited. I you know we closed now. We closed officially yesterday. The legislature officially closed yesterday. And interestingly, the district is good. It's fine. I during this break, we will make sure that we visit every community. Every community in this district will be visited by me and my team. And we'll be doing all of these assessments as we jump started the process. So I the job will be done during the what you call agriculture break, where it's actually constituency break and not agriculture break. But people just usually call it agriculture break. So during this constituency uh, break, we will be traveling uh, throughout our electoral district. The engage our people, we'll talk to them. We'll tell them the gains we made, the challenges. And as we come back again, we'll make sure that uh, those things that they want us to do that we did not do, we do that, those things. But the district is very good. But to be basically, I'm here for the cardinal reason. I the intra-district tournament. I in Montserrado County. We know we have 17 electoral districts. And I there is a soccer tournament that will be hosted at the ATS. The ATS I, is in our electoral district. And we expect that we have our team there. So I received a communication from the Central Moral Subcommittee. I that wrote my office officially uh, a few days ago requesting that we try to help our district team. You know, district in Montserrado County has the greatest players. A lot of people come into our district to borrow our players. We have them in abundance even more than the national resident team. Uh, we have players that I, I mean, they are in abundance. So we expect to take the trophy. And to take the trophy, we must provide a necessary incentive for our players. So it is my fervent hope that what we do, I, the managerial team, including the technical team and the coaches, will reach out to the players, will reach out to the spectators, so that uh, we can win the trophy this year, we hoping because after this tournament, I guess will be the county meet. We hope that uh, many of our players will form part of the county meet, uh, especially for Montserrado County. So I received this communication uh, with a budget of uh, one thousand five six hundred dollars because it's both in US. And like Brenda, in US is 1,460, and in like Brenda is 16,100. Uh, it's a good budget. I, I think it costs the tournament. Some of the materials they ask for, like Jesse football, rules, golf, bits, coins, technical stuff, medication, water for the games and practice, transportation incentives, etc., for our people. I told them one important thing. I said, you go, train, do what you can do. When you get the team, you report to me, and then I will pick up on that. And they really, really been doing well. And let me appreciate the newly elected uh, district council, uh, head, the chairman, uh, Emmanuel, who is in my office. He's popular in you as Trabino Fado, uh, in lecturer district number eight, Montserrat County. So he's been working with them, and I also have appointed in my office uh, Mr. Stimmer to be uh, the sport coordinator for my office and that will liaise with uh, the coordinating team, along with the council head and my COS, that is my chief of office staff, will liaise with them. I will be leaving the country today for national duty, maybe one week or a week and a half, and I will be back. I will not be here for a first game. But I believe that the boys will go out there and fight. And in so doing, um, 
We secure two judges immediately. You see the judges on one side. You know, we bear the national color in this trade. We are the big home of four. So this is the jersey. Uh, we secure also two football for the practice. And there's a second set of jersey. I want to be on record today that we will fully take full responsibility for the project that is submitted. And not a dam will be left on. So that is a budget of 1,600, almost close to 1,600. We'll take full responsibility and we'll provide the money in stages as we progress. And I, the next thing we do is that we will ensure that every gameplay, because uh, in fact, this is the captain uh, of the team, and I, this is the coach of the team. So uh, I want to say to the coach, the technical team, the managerial team, the captain, that you have a responsibility to win the game. I fight for everything that I earn in my life. So I believe in fighting for success, constructively and not destructively. <clears throat> so I guess uh, you will be placed into Zoom, right? Yeah, right. Zoom of four? Zoom of four. Four teams. That means we have three games. So let me assure you that every game we play will wear a new set of jersey. players will take the jersey. What do I mean by that? After the game, you don't have to ask the players for the jersey. They got to take it home for their own children there and keep. So if you reach to the final, then be assured that after the zonal stage, you still have a set of jersey for every game in this entire tournament. The second thing there is that, the second thing is that you got to win the games. We are winners. We have the first three games to secure a place for the NACO or quarterfinal? For the NACO. So I want to say to you that if you reach the NACO stage, I will provide, because the NACO, the quarterfinal, semifinal, and final. So from the NACO stage to the semifinal, Everything we'll give you people five hundred United States dollars. That is one thousand five hundred for those three games. So you have to go and fight for it. NACO will give you five hundred. Quarterfinal will give you five hundred. Semifinal will give you five hundred. The final, if you reach just for reaching the final, on the day of the final, we'll give one thousand dollars. So that will be two thousand five hundred dollars. I hope you go and fight for it. It's your choice. It's your decision to make. I at this stage. For the three games, um, we'll provide for the three games, we'll provide you with 900 United States dollars. So that means every game 300 United States dollars. So for the three games, you're going to get 900 United States dollars. And today I'll give you 500 other than 900 United States dollars. So that you can go and prepare, you can play the, play the players, you take care of other things. So with all much I do, we just want to say thank you very much I, for coming and I and we'll present to you the jersey is here. I will give to you I, this and this and the rest of the jersey on the table there. So uh, you know, you go and you say something you do real quick before the people say it. Uh, we gotta do it. So, uh, and my council, yes, my acting council, <coughs> is the five hundred dollars. One of the first now hundred dollars. So before you play uh, the first uh, before you play the other games, we'll give the balance four hundred dollars. Give it give it to your email absence so that uh, you people can make sure that I don't want to complain after every game that the players be paid and let them be taken care of. 
And if there is any other challenges that you have, you can still get to me whether I in Liberia or other Liberia will be able to do our best. So I know you wanted to ask a question, yeah, but yeah, let me basically allow them to talk. Okay. Just one more minute from there, then you can ask your question. All right. All right. Um, I'm E. Edward Tiki Simbe, uh, the head coach of district number eight, appointed. Uh, Honorable Gray, we are very, very much grateful for these materials provided us. And with God above, we assure you that this trophy, we got an information that they just really have never qualified from crew stage. But we want to promise you, we got a book that we're going to qualify from the Zuno stage, and then we're going to be equal to the final. Okay, I show you. But well, we are very, very much grateful for receiving these materials and we can also. Thank you. Uh, thank you the captain wants to say something. Uh, I am Anderson Rapedo, captain of district number eight. I firstly want to say a big thank you to the honorable man for his tireless effort and contribution to our district team. We want to work, we want to work diligently with all our might to make sure we can be a success in the tournament. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, I mean, you can leave now. I think the journalists want to ask some questions. <laughs> so you can. Yeah, thank you very much. Wish you well. And God bless you. Thank you. To this tree. We can just quietly leave because you Yeah. Uh, Honorable Gray, uh, recently the, there was news in the public that President Weir has uh, appointed someone in the U.S. to be a PR on behalf of the government of Liberia. Can you speak to that? <laughs> Basically, I, to get a lobbyist in anywhere around the world, in any country, it's not a crime, especially in the great United States of America. I think I'm excited about that. You know, a lot of good things we've done, and I, a lot of perceptions out there, and I think those perceptions I, will be diminished. And once I the lobby is just his job, but it's a good thing. It's, it's really a good thing to, to do. What did we make of the story from the CNN? The Fox News, sorry. The Fox News? Yes. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, you, you, you asked a very important question. And I, look, the first thing is that the Fox News uh, reporter, we have to come to check the news. I know he said that he's quoting a State Department report. Now, the first thing is that he spoke of 2012. This administration was not in power 2012. We were inducted into office. I'm talking about the, after the presidential election of 2017. In 2018, we were inducted into office. On the issue of, I, I think you spoke of the issue of a government, or a country, that France on same-sex relationship, mm -hmm. and CNN has, I think, two reporters uh, who come from that background. And I, he said there was a report of 2012. I want the first reporter to know, as a ranking member of the legislature, and being inducted into office since 2012, and as chairman on executive of uh, the House of Representatives, at no point in time, in 2012, or after 2012, because I was here, that this legislature passed a law, an anti-law, let me repeat, that is the 50th day in 2012, did not pass any anti-law on same-sex relationship. There was no law passed that provided for a punitive measure of going to jail for one year, as I read. No law absolutely, as of, let me repeat, as of 2012, against such. So that is erroneous. And if it's a report from the State Department, then you have to correct that. If they said there was a law passed, because you didn't say there was a bill submitted. I know there was a bill submitted, but the bill remains in committee room and has never been passed. Let me repeat. There was a bill submitted, 
but that bill has never been passed, has never been presented to the legislative floor since 2012, okay, to this legislature. So that news of a law being passed here 2012 is erroneous. This administration since 2018 has made large strides because I, I saw some report about uh, domestic abuse or abuse against women, etc. Let me tell you, we passed the domestic violence bill was signed into law under this administration. There is a domestic violence act for the first time in the history of the country. And I think the first reporter has to know that. We've made some strike. Like the FGM, female genital mutilation. There is an existing executive decision, okay, on that. So for you to say that like an, a government or a country that has passed a law, I think we have to, he has to make the necessary correction, but there is no law. And as a ranking member of the legislature, <coughs> I feel inducted for such a report to come all against my country that 2012, while I, being a sitting lawmaker, there was an anti-gay bill that was passed into law in our country. No, there was a bill submitted, but it was never passed. So I just wanted to make that very clear. It's very important. So let the message go out there. I know a lot of people were listening it, and I uh, will not get involved into their own issue with Fox News and CNN. It's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to make sure that we say what is right, and I hold Fox News because I contacted someone there to make the necessary correction that there's no existing law as of 2012. I know before even President Salis came to power, there's a law on Sodom. Okay. But before she came to power even in 2006. So, but there's no, there was no bill passed yet as of 2012 that forbade that. No bill passed by us into law. I wanted to make that correction. The second thing, let me reiterate that this government has made a greater strike in protecting our women, in protecting the children of this country, in protecting even the disadvantaged men and disadvantaged people by passing the Domestic Violence Act. And I hope the CNN will pick up the strike we made and also that the FGM, there's an executive restriction on the FGM in our country. Okay, so um, good morning. I'm Webster Clay from Front Page Africa. Uh, whenever you be you will be going back to your district, and like you put in more energy in sporting activity. Uh, one may ask, all activity like the academic, are you not going to put your energy there to see? Yeah, because many no, of the no. children have been sitting home for a longer time now. Are you not going to? No, we we always been involved into the academic welfare, and I think that has been our mistake. We've not done a lot of PR on it. One of my greatest spending in my district has to do with the academic institutions and trying to help some health institutions. Okay, we've consistently done that. We have over 200 children that we take care of. Okay, all uh, right, academically. In fact, uh, I spoke to the academic challenge team to see my academic coordinating team to see how we can have an academic challenge uh, in our electoral district. So obviously there will be a lot of academic issues uh, that we'll be addressing, okay. But we want to meet, we want to greet, we want to interact, we want to make a report to our people on our gains, on our sources, the custom of the 30,000 hours have been raised, etc. So all of those things, we these are some of the engagements that we are in with our people. And I can assure you that we'll tell them exactly some of the things we've done and what we intend to do uh, gradually. Uh, recently you were engaged in a boycott and you proudly criticized the boycott. Can you speak to this? A boycott of what? The program. In my district? Yeah. Broke up? Oh, are you talking about the Spoon FM? Yeah, yeah, the Spoon FM broke up. <laughs> you know, I actually, I didn't want to speak to it. But the thing here is that, you know, every individual deserves respect. I'm, I'm, and the media, Liberian media, even international media, will say, I'm almost the most, or I'm the highest interview, maybe government official. 
I'm the guy who has never shot away from going into the lion den. Even if you said that this is going to roast you. But respect has always been shown. I've been on almost every radio station that has invited me. I've spoken to almost every journalist in terms of their institution, almost, not all. International, you know, from the time I was assistant secretary, and in fact, from the time Taylor departure, the rise and fall of Taylor, I was there. You saw the guy with the red hat on the rise and fall of Taylor, that's me. Doing the right, doing the demonstration in Liberia, doing the Liberian Civil War. A lot of people don't know. The guy with the red hat doing the rise and fall of Taylor. But I just think that I, I have my rights to decide which radio station I go to or which radio station I don't go to. Like you have your right to decide who you want, which interview you want to go to or which interview you don't want to go to. I think they just need to step up their game. They need to show greater respect to their audience. You know, I smiled the last time. The same guys who congratulated me when I got engaged. But the same guy who said, oh, he told the truth.